Our next speaker is running for state treasurer. His name is Mark Cardenas. He currently represents the 19th legislative district at the Arizona House of Representatives, and he's serving his third term, sitting on the Ways and Means Committee, so he knows where the money is, <laughs> appropriations. Uh, he's a native Arizonan. He comes from a blue-collar, hard-working family. Uh, his father was in the trucking industry. His mom was a housekeeper. And their work ethic led him to join the U.S. Army, where he did a tour in Iraq. Uh, following active duty, he used the GI Bill to attend Phoenix College and the University of Southern California. And then he worked as an accountant, which is really a good thing to know to become treasurer. <laughs> and he was in the Department of Defense managing a multi-million dollar budget. Um, Mark has been working to expand health care to Arizonans, obtaining housing for homeless veterans, and increase education funding for public schools. Please welcome Mark Cardenas. Good evening, everyone. Um, and by the way, my mom came with me, so we are an underfunded campaign, so I get free labor uh, as I, I beg for it. Um, and so my mom is actually here with me today. Uh, drive, and so in exchange, I have to stop by Rock Springs Cafe on the way back. Uh, um, before I start, I just want to know if there are any uh, educators or retired educators in the audience. I just want first. I wanted to uh, please. Can anyone give him a round of applause? And no one in this room would be here if it wasn't for a community that cared. Um, and in my life, in particular, I had uh, plenty of teachers who who cared about me. In particular, one one that was actually holding vigil at the ca at the Capitol. Uh, uh, I call him Mr. Darrow still, but he call, told me to call him Dan. It's still kind of weird. Um, uh, so I appreciate it because I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for public school educators taking time out of their lives to ensure that I had the tools that I needed to succeed. Um, so it's hard to tell you what I want to do in the treasurer's office if you don't know who I am, if you don't believe uh, in my vision. Um, as, as Tony's mentioned, uh, I'm, I'm a first generation American. Um, my parents actually both immigrated from Mexico. My dad, I think, when he was nine, and my mom, when uh, my grandmother was crossing the border, um, she had my mom about 30 minutes after uh, she crossed in El Paso. So, and, and then we all ended up in Phoenix. Um, so growing up, as I, as I alluded to before, I was the beneficiary of a community that cared. A community back in the 90s where our per pupil funding was above the nat national average. Um, where our schools weren't crumbling, where the free lunch program meant something, where we were able to go to get food boxes when we needed them, when we weren't harassed uh, when we needed food stamps in order to survive. Um, I felt so uh, grateful for what the people before me have provided for me that I decided to give back by joining the military. Uh, that, and I was kind of tired of Arizona, so I wanted to go out and see the world. Um, if anyone has been in the military, you get to see some incredible places. I got stationed in Mississippi. Uh, so uh, I, I, I did my eight years and I got out. Um, but at the same time, when I got out, I decided that I was going to take the GI Bill and go to college. And I went to college in California. And this is about the, this is the end of the 2000s, and so it's inevitable when you're in college where people ask you, well, where are you from? And with much with, with pride in my heart and joy, I would say I'm from Phoenix, Arizona. And the response from everyone was, oh, you're from that place? <laughs> uh, 2009, Steve, Steve can attest to this, this is when we had this gentleman named Russell Pierce and he was running the show there. And so I decided to look at the internet and holy crap, what has happened in my state? And I went back to what I remembered growing up. I remembered my teachers that cared. I remembered my community that cared. I remembered people who, um, 
even even my summers actually I spent my summers in Prescott with a friend of the family mowing acres and acres of grass. Um, people that cared about me, that made sure that I had the tools that I needed to succeed to do whatever I wanted to do in my life. And it was at that point I decided it was time to go home. And this is 2011 when this is happening. I moved back home, I get a job, and I realized that it's not enough. It's not enough to merely volunteer for candidates, to give to candidates, to, to do, do whatever it is we do on, on blogging and such. It was time to step up and take, you know, if, if, if you, uh, if you're the beneficiary of great leaders, you have to become one. And so I decided to run for the state house in 2012 at the minimum age of 25. Um, and so I first I get my I get my clipboards so with my petition and I go knock on the first door. And the person who uh, I knock on the door, um, I knock on the door, say hi, I'm Mark Cardenas. I am running to be you know the next state representative for district uh, legislative district 19. And her response was, I hate all you politicians. All you come is for my vote. You just take my ballot and you, I don't see you for another two years and I get nothing out of it. And after being taken aback, and I, got, I went home that night and I realized that she was kind of right. So, so many, and you see it with your representatives here. They care when there's a town hall, uh, Mr. Campbell, Mr. Stringer, Ms. Fan. They care when there's a town hall, they care when they need something from you, they care when there's a camera in front of their face and then you don't see him. And so I went back that night and I said, I'm gonna prove her wrong if I win. And uh, lo and behold, I won by 305 votes. And It's not done yet. I went back to her house. <laughs> and I went with my, and, I, and now I have, I have state printed cards that say Mark Cardenas State Representative on it. And so I knocked on her door and I said, hi, I'm State Representative Mark Cardenas. How can I help you? What's going on in the neighborhood? Let's chat. And her response was, I hate all you politicians. <laughs> <laughs> Just come here to ask my ballot, and I don't see you again. And, I, and after, after I was like, I calmed her down, I said, hey, I'm, I don't want your ballot. Your ballot's not in the mail. Remember me? I was here 10 months ago, and you told me that all we wanted was your vote. I'm here to see what I can do for you. And after the initial shock <laughs> of her being, you know, everything that she believed all these years was kind of thrown back into her, uh, she said, the street light outside my house is out, and so my children, I can't let them play after school at night. When and the, the cars race in the neighborhood, it's not safe. I have to have them inside the house at four o'clock, and it's not fair. And so, gave her my card. I said, "Hey, shoot me an email. Send me your name, address, phone number. I'll take care of it." And so, in all honesty, all I did was just email my city councilman and say, "Hey, this person, I'd worked on his campaign, so he knew me. Uh, this person is having this issue. Can you send someone from Public Works out there to fix the light?" called back and he said, no problem. If, no, if it's not a truck there by Wednesday, give me a call. I'll make sure it happens. And Wednesday I called, she, she had actually sent me an email. And Wednesday I said, I'm, I'm actually about to hit send on that email to say, hey, has the truck been there? She emailed me back and said, truck just left. Lights back, they, they installed the light. Thank you for making me believe that government works for me again. That is what I've tried to do at the state capitol for six years. The, the blue wave is coming. I've heard that so many times this year. The blue wave is coming. The numbers are in our favor. But I promise you, they're not. the voters aren't just going to show up. You have to give them a reason to vote. My opponent in the race, uh, talking about the Republican opponent, look at her website. It's, I'm a great Republican. I got the best elephant of the year award. I'm the most conservative <laughs> person in the race. Um, and if I was a Republican, I would run the same way because they have the numbers. We have to show them how we have a better plan. Yes. How the, if, if, if you're a Republican donor, you have gotten a great return on investment these, this past decade. And Steve, can, Steve and I can attest, this past budget debate, I ran amendments to remove the tax exemptions on country club memberships, private plane purchases, and fine art and they got voted down. And so we have a majority in the state legislature. We have the statewide elected officials currently 
who are so focused on re having a good return on investment for the people who invest in their campaign, and they've stopped listening to you. Now, in all honesty, the tre no one really the, the benefit of running for the state treasurer's office is that no one really knows what the state treasurer does. So I can tell you I'm going to deliver all these crazy things that you'll believe me, or maybe, maybe not. Um, but at the same time, my job is to be the financial watchdog of your tax dollars. And this past week, we actually, so the state banks with Wells Fargo and Bank of America. That's our major bank. This past week, I know we've had an issue with, uh, with the city of Prescott where they are they're actually, their PSPRS pensions are actually uh, un drastically underfunded because of the firefighters that we lost in Yarnell. We actually had to give them an extra million dollars to shore them up. Um, what happened last week is that Wells Fargo, who is in charge of police and firefighter pensions around the country, they got a rebate, and instead of refunding that to police and fire pensions, they pocketed it. Oh. <laughs> These are the priorities of the donors of the Republican Party. My plan, now, I've, I've, I'm the candidate that has released a plan to fully fund education. If you, if you love numbers, if you're an accountant, go to cardenaseducationplan.com. It's like a seven-page PDF that I wrote in the middle of the night. Um, the next plan that we will be introducing next week is to pull back the $15 billion of state retirement funds that we invest from, that would divest it from Wells Fargo and divest it from Bank of America, and to put it in our local credit unions. <laughs> money locally. The employees are local, therefore 41 cents of every dollar you give to an employee here stays local. And by the way, we're going to institute a micro lending program for black, Latino, and women owned uh, uh, business entrepreneurs. And lastly, a micro lending program so we can finally get rid of all of these payday lenders that are plaguing my neighborhood. So with that, I'm going to shut up. But uh, my, I would appreciate it because we are in the final stretch of our petitions. And so my mom has uh, my petitions over there. I will have a clipboard. I would appreciate if you do sign, if you would like to sign my petitions. Uh, we need each and every one of you to get on the ballot. I think it's like 6,200 or 7,000 people I need. So thank you and I appreciate the time and thank you, Tony.